Stories stir the soul. Stories reveal. And stories heal. In this podcast, we will give you an inside look at someone who's had a life-changing breakthrough. Real people, real stories with real breakthroughs. As a health and wellness expert and coach and Todd as a men's mentor, we've seen firsthand what God can do when it comes to a breakthrough. So lean in, listen well, this could be your biggest breakthrough. Hello and welcome to this episode of Your Biggest Breakthrough. Oh, let me get my microphone mic. over here. <laughs> I'm Todd. I'm Todd Isberger with the microphone in front of my face now. That works a lot better that way, doesn't it? It's hilarious. Of course, if I talked in your microphone, we'd be a lot closer. Yeah, yeah you, know. you just want to be close. All right. Okay. So let me, let me ask you a question. Yes. Are you happy? For the most part, I think I usually am. Are you no. joyful? Yes. I have the joy of the Lord. All right. So that wasn't necessarily a trick question, but I do think there's a difference between the two. There's a distinction between happiness and joy. Yes, there is. But we're going to find out from our guest today, Oliver Asher, and he's going to share all about invincible joy. But Oliver and his wife, Andrea, they graduated from the University of Virginia. They're married. And uh, obviously, because I said his wife, but they moved to the Dominican Republic uh, to be missionaries, all in the space of three months. Wow. Their life together with Jesus and their five children has continued to be quite the adventure. Yeah, he's got a cool story about how he went from one position and, and transitioned to another. So after completing his master's in civil engineering at UVA, the Lord called Oliver to advancing native missions. That's a great organization. And he called him after he had worked as an environmental engineer. So he had to make this decision to leave kind of a cushy position to go don't into t- missions. Don't okay. talk, right, Let's talk about right. it. Okay. Yeah. So Oliver has a passion for building teams. He loves encouraging the AM staff and both equipping and advocating for native missionaries as they endeavor to reach the remaining unreached people groups around the world. The yes. gospel of Jesus. Yes. And Oliver would say he's not an extraordinary person. He came from next to nothing, from almost nowhere. Oh, wait till you hear that story. I love that, right? Oh, right? my goodness. I know. <laughs> but God had a plan and a purpose for his life, and he picked him up from where he was and took him places he never thought he was expected to go. And so he wants to invite us, all of us, to join him in chasing God-sized dreams for the world. And that is where you find invincible joy. Enjoy the interview. Well, welcome, Oliver Asher, to Your Biggest Breakthrough. We are so excited to have you here. Um, I know that what? No, I was just going to say, well, I'm so sorry, but I'm just, I'm looking at the screen. See, if you're seeing this on, yeah, if you're seeing this on YouTube, you already understand why we're going to be talking about joy, invincible joy, because he's always got a smile on his face. Yes. And he has to, because he wrote the book. Yes. So thank you, Oliver, (laughs) for being with us today. Um, Wendy, Todd, great to be with y'all. Thank you. Yes. So we want to jump right into it because you have had a a very unique and interesting life. And so I can't wait to uh, just... Uh, unravel all that God has has um, laid out before you and has led you to this point right here and right now. But we're also going to um, talk a lot about, uh, you know, chasing God-sized dreams yeah. for the world. Like that's massive. I mean, we're going to be talking a lot about invincible joy, but chasing yeah. God-sized dreams. Yeah. I think more of us need to catch hold of that. Yeah. We want to, uh, man, we want to just tag along on your journey. If you're still ch- chasing those dreams, we don't have any. <laughs> And let me ask you this, because you've written this book, Invincible Joy, and you have lots of stories and experiences where you've learned that. Yeah, Wendy's holding up the book if you're on YouTube. Uh, I just have to ask you a straight up question. I just had this discussion recently with somebody, and that is, uh, we talked about happiness, we talked about joy. So I just want to ask you, is there a difference? What's the distinction, if there is, between joy and happiness? Yeah, so Todd, um, for me, I would say that the distinction is that when you think about happiness, you think about like, you know, when things are going good, when, you know, life's good and uh, just everything is good, right? <clears throat> that you're happy and, you know, and that's great. But, um, you know, when you think about joy, uh, you know, joy comes in spite of, you know, circumstances, difficulties, pain, struggle, whatever it is. Joy is really, I feel like, you know, should be at least the Christian response 
uh, to the world, you know, to, to problems, situations, you know, so whether things are good or bad, you can still have joy. But I tend to think of happiness, again, being more based on circumstances, you know, if life's good, mm. then we're happy. But, you know, whether life is good or not, you know, we can still be joyful in the Lord. Yes, that's, yeah, that's so good. good. So yeah. good. Well, your childhood experiences play a huge, very important role in how uh, you view the world today. So tell us a little bit about what your life was like uh, just growing up and, and uh, yeah, just, just take us there. Yeah, sure. And, and listen, along the way, if you have questions or, you know, need clarifications, let me know. But yeah, so basically, you know, like I say in the book, kind of had a rough start, you know, to life, um, was uh, born, you know, in Tampa, Florida to a teenage mom. My dad was in prison. Uh, when he found out I was in, uh, when I was born, uh, he actually was on a, uh, in prison on a, on a, uh, a road to a chain gang at one point and decided he was going to escape and come and visit, you know, me and my mom. And so he did. And if wow. you know anything about the geography between Southern and Northern Florida, <laughs> he had to wow. run through the Everglades literally, and yeah, and he came back home. And so evidently, of course, this is, you know, what I know from my mom. I don't, I don't know, you know, from memory myself, but because I was a newborn, but evidently he was out for a couple of months and then a SWAT team came, you know, broke open every door and window and took him back to prison. And he was in a four by eight uh, dark cell for about two more years on high, high security. So, yeah, so that wow. was kind of the beginning of life. And uh, yeah, so I guess, you know, at some point when he got out, uh, they decided to move to Virginia because that's where his family was from. So, yeah, so we really, we moved to Virginia, I think probably get a fresh start. And, uh, you know, we uh, bought a little trailer on the side of a mountain, just living the country life, you know, down in the holler. And the so, holler, yeah, so that was. Okay, wait, you know, I got to gotta stop you right now. I got to stop yeah, you. Absolutely. I got a question, Oliver. So sure. you're saying, you said when he got out. So he got out yeah. and the, your parents stayed together. Absolutely. That's correct. Yeah. Wow. They stayed together. They did. Yeah. Okay. So All my right. mom was faithful. She yeah waited for him. They got out and then we yeah moved to Virginia from there. That's right. And, and you know, everyone's asking in their mind, or at least I am. Okay. So why was he in prison? Yeah. I'm just asking yeah. <laughs> if you want to touch on it. <laughs> you know, my understanding, I don't have all the details, but he was evidently a pretty good thief. Uh, and would, you know, go into houses and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, steal. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, and including, you know, safety, uh, deposit boxes, things like that. Or, mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah, that's, right. those are the main things. I mean, he, you know, he, he tells me stories that, you know, probably for times when he should have been to, sent to jail with, that he wasn't. But that, I think, is the official word. Okay. All right. Well, I just know that'd be a question right. there, right? Well, let's pick up. Kind of, yeah. So my dad, just to give a little background, was the yeah. oldest of 12, very poor family. He kind of was out on his own by the time he was 14, hitchhiking between Virginia and Florida and mm. you know, ended up settling down there for a while. But yeah, just kind of, you know, independent uh, uh, and just uh, kind of wild. And so, yeah, so we ended up Makes there sense. in prison and got yeah. out and, and again, went back to Virginia for a fresh start. Yeah. So, and that's how yeah. God, God so, is anyway. good. He gives us a fresh start, doesn't he? Amen. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So unfortunately at that time, they, neither my parents knew the Lord, although my dad had been raised, um, you know, with the gospel, he knew the gospel. My grandmother, Lily is the one that shared the gospel with my mom, Carol. And so I have the same testimony as Timothy or Paul tells Timothy in second Timothy one, five, the faith I saw in your grandmother Lois, I saw in your mother Eunice. And Timothy, I see that faith in you. So I owe my faith to my grandmother Lily and to my mom Carol. So when we were living in that trailer, I was probably about uh, five when we moved to Virginia. When I was about eight, that's when mom, when Lily shared the gospel with my mom Carol, and then she shared it with us kids. You know, and even as a boy, you know, eight years old, I mean, I'd already you know said some bad words. I'd you know beat up my brother. I had you know stole a. Uh, a Swiss army knife from the five and dime and ironically lost it crossing a swinging bridge. And, you know, so I knew I was a sinner. And so when, you know, mom told me the good news that, Hey, there was a, you know, a savior that, you know, left heaven, was born in the Virgin Mary, lived a sinless life, suffered a horrible death on the cross, took my sin, imputed his righteousness to me, rose from the dead and ascended to heaven and, and is coming back. I, I knew I, I wanted to know that savior. And mm -hmm. so I, you know, just as a boy, I just believed and said, man, Jesus, you know, come into my heart. I want to, you know, I want to live for you the rest of my life. So I'm very blessed, you know, yeah. to have that Christian heritage. So that was the, 
first of all, you talk about, you know, breakthroughs and transformation. That certainly was, you know, the biggest breakthrough and transformation in my life ever. So going back to the, to the holler though. uh, So we were living in the holler and, you know, living the simple life. And then when I was 12 years old, something happened that, that really changed the trajectory of uh, our lives and our trailer burned down. So fortunately my, we were at school. My mom was in the trailer. She got out fine. And so we're all okay. But um, what happened is we didn't have insurance. You know, we weren't able to, to build a new one or, or, you know, bring in a new one. So we decided to move into uh, a tool shed that was on our property. So we had a tool shed on the property and it wasn't very big. You know, if you could see my office, it was probably about this big. Sorry, you can't, can't see the whole thing, but just very small. But, and it literally had one light bulb in the middle of the room, uh, no indoor plumbing, um, you know, no heat, no electricity, except for that, you know, one, one light switch. And so, yeah, we were, we said, Hey, we'll live in here for six months until we can save up, you know, make a deposit on another trailer and, you know, and then move it in. But six months turned into six years. So we wow. were, yeah. So in the tool shed the, in the, for six years. <laughs> oh yeah, and, how, and how many siblings? Wow. Uh, yeah. So two siblings. Yeah. Wow. Actually, wow. Actually, my one sibling, my uh, youngest sister was killed in a car accident while we were in that, mm-hmm. that tool shed. Uh-huh. But literally when we moved in, there was an outhouse on the side of the hill. Uh, there was a creek. Good thing about living in the mountains of Virginia, you always have clean, fresh water. It was a little cold, you know, but anyway, we, you know, washed everything in the creek. And so that, again, just, you know, was living life. Um, my dad, um, he was an iron worker, did different kinds of jobs, and uh, but but something that was pretty steady throughout my childhood was uh, he would log in the summer and cut wood in the winter, and so I uh, those were my first football workouts was carrying a steel chainsaw around, you know, up wow. and down the mountains. Yeah. So we had a system. My dad would cut the tree down, you know, I'd I'd cut it up. My brother would trim it, and, and we could literally haul twenty or thirty loads of wood out of the out of the woods in a, in a given day. You're so that was pretty much, you know, wow. <laughs> yeah, my brother and I, we were, you know, his his biggest helper. So anyway, so what happened though? So I was going to, uh, you know, small high school there in Southwest Virginia, four hundred kids, you know, from seven to twelve, and uh, we had a coach who moved in, a great Christian man, uh, became a mentor and like a father to me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, invited me to come out and play for the football team. And so actually, uh, we were terrible, though. That was the only thing, you know, we in 21 years, we had like four winning seasons, right? (laughs) (laughs) So, and uh, anyway, so yeah, my, my, to give you an idea, my eighth grade year, our team lost to our rivals 91 to zero. Oh no! Oh, How's that even that's, possible? That's always the reaction is like, oh no! <laughs> Wait a minute! How can, how can you is, score ninety-one points? I thought in you high said I thought you said football, not basketball. <laughs> he did. That's awesome. Exactly right. Okay, that's great. Okay, well, right? that, this is <laughs> that was a humbling experience. <laughs> Very humbling. I'm just glad I was in eighth grade. I wasn't part of that team, you know. So anyway, so the, <laughs> so by by the time I was a senior again, under the um, you know great. Um, uh, mentorship of this coach, we uh, became district champions. You know, won the district, won first round of playoffs, ended up going to the region finals, and yeah, and that was really kind of my ticket out of the holler. You know, mm-hmm. I got some attention. I had a great coach again that you know sent out the film and got me recruited. So that's how I ended up uh, going to the University of Virginia uh, to play football. And it's kind that's of funny, cool. like I so I grew up on the Tennessee Virginia line. I know, I don't know. You know, I know people are in different places, but it's it's just country, right? I mean, it's like mountains, country. Yeah. And so everything south was University of Tennessee volunteers, right? Everything north was the Virginia Tech Hokies because those were the two closest schools, two hours north and south. So when they said, hey, University of Virginia, they're interested in you playing football. I didn't know who they were. Again, I was so <laughs> back in the woods. It's like, who's the University of Virginia? <laughs> That's I didn't know where Charlottesville was. You know, it's about two hours south of D.C. And I was like, you know, so I had to educate myself, come up to Charlottesville, fell in love with it, uh, ended up coming here. And yeah, so ended up at the University of Virginia. So remember, so my parents, neither of them graduated from high school. Mm-hmm. So their goal for me was to graduate from high school. That was the big goal. So to go on to college was a dream that they didn't even have for me. But I had for myself. And again, it, you know, it was one of those things just 
God put something in me to want to, you know, do something, be somebody, be motivated, go yeah. somewhere, do more. I mean, it's kind of funny. I mean, you know, I've been able to travel to probably 40 or 50 countries to preach the gospel, encourage pastors. You know, my brother still hasn't been out. of He hasn't been on a plane, you know, and that's just how it is. You know, again, yeah. when, you know, and it's just uh, right. Wait, so so, let's anyway, go back. so like, God in his mercy and grace, you know, called me out of that to, yeah, yeah to the University of Virginia and. That's kind of, that's a big part of my story. Let me say though, the best thing that happened to me there was I met my wife, Andrea. Uh, and uh, yeah, she is the love of my life. We've been married 35 years. We have five kids. Awesome. And so, yeah, we graduated in May. We got married in June. Then we moved to the Dominican Republic in August to be missionaries for a year. And then oh after that year was yeah. over, we came back to Charlottesville and started raising a family where we raised again, five kids. So my That's goodness. kind of, yeah, it takes me up, you know, through college. Those are the early days. If you have any <laughs> questions so, or let's go back to the holler for just a second. Because you just like I, to say holler. No, I do. I like to holler. holler. That's right. Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> that's such an isolated world compared to what don't. most of us are familiar with. Right. Yes. I mean, right. you guys are living in a, in a shack uh, yeah. for six years with one light bulb in the middle of the, uh, I mean, it's just, it, it's just hard to yeah. even imagine, but you guys, that was you, your normal. You pushed through that, that was our normal. We had a party phone, you know, where everybody on the, yeah. on the Creek had, you know, we're on the same line. <laughs> you had to wait for people to get off before you could talk. Oh, man. <laughs> but when you were, yeah. uh, what, what age did the, uh, the trailer burn? Was it, uh, so it was eight, tw- I was 12. Yeah. 12. Yeah. Grade, 12 so I mean, that must old. have been a tremendous sense of loss for you, for your whole family. Really? Um, yeah. how did you deal with that? Did you discovered yet the, ability to have joy you had this kind of this this budding relationship with the lord but you just you i mean you've lost your home uh in some ways you you had a little bit of loss with your dad out there working all the time and yeah i'm just i'm curious if if you had felt any sense of joy yet because those are those are tough circumstances Yeah. Yeah. So Todd, um, definitely. Yeah. That was, uh, I remember when the, you know, vice principal called me to the office and, you know, again, I was in seventh grade and he called me down and he's like, Hey, you know, I'm sorry, Oliver, to give you this bad news, but your, you know, your house burned down and, uh, but your mom's okay. And so I guess, you know, I just kind of had a sense of, you know, Hey, it, it's okay. My mom is okay. So mm-hmm. I'm, you know, it's okay. And, but I do remember going home on the bus and, you know, way you get to our house is, go to the hard, you know, take the hard road as far as you could until the end and then go down the gravel road until it ended. And then you were there, <laughs> you know? but I remember coming around that last bend and just, you know, seeing that, you know, basically the charred melted remains, you know, of our trailer. And it certainly was, you know, very sad and, yeah. you know, and, and disheartening for sure. Now, fortunately, so my grandmother lived up the road about a mile. So I think we ended up basically staying with her, you know, for a couple of weeks until we could transition uh, but yeah, but definitely Todd, that, that first, that sense of remorse and, you know, but once I really, once I found out my mom was okay, it, it, it was okay. And honestly, during that time too, like I told you in the shack, you know, when I was 16, so it have been in there about four years, my sister was killed in a car accident. That was definitely the hardest day of my life. And, you know, for any of us. And so we had times like that, but, you know, God was with us, you know, and it just seems like. Todd and Wendy, that, you know, it, it didn't matter, you know, what challenges came, the pain, the suffering, whatever. I mean, certainly you took that time to grieve, to, you know, recognize, hey, this is hard. This is a struggle. But then somehow, some way, the Lord just brought us, you know, out on the other side and we were able to, you know, continue life and just, you know, have still have expectations and hope, you know, yeah. in life. Well, I, I, I've just got to break in because I, because it's real clear you, you had developed the right perspective and you're, your happiness slash joy was not dependent upon the circumstances. Mm-hmm. Had you just been happy, then yeah, you'd have been miserable. But because you had oh. joy, it wasn't dependent. It was dependent upon the Lord and giving you that perspective. I think that's yeah. that's a remarkable experience and a good lesson for all of us. It sure is. And I think about uh, your your mom and dad, and I just I, I'm trying to picture. I mean, I would have this picture of your mom in my head, and I've never met her, right? But I'm thinking, man, she is one tough cookie yeah. um, in my mind. I'm and the like, sweetest gosh, angel you ever I met. Bet, mm-hmm. I bet. I <laughs> bet. Anyway, but um, I, I'm, you, you mentioned about these coaches in, in your life that really made a big impact. And we can all make an impact with somebody. So we need to be aware when we're speaking to people and, and, and uh, you know, speaking yes. life or death over their, over their life. But are there other people that were also a positive influence and and helped you get to where you are today and really live out this invincible joy. 
Yeah, so Wendy, that's a great question. And and you're right. The certainly the coaches that I had, you know, in high school were great mentors. And, you know, he actually brought the Fellowship of Christian Athletes uh to our high school. And of course I became very involved in that when I went to UBA, stayed involved. But you know, it's kind of funny. Yeah, it seems like God, at least in my experience, has always put kind of a guardian angel there along mm-hmm. the way. And I remember when I was five years old, and actually uh we had uh, moved to town for a little while. And uh, we were living on this uh, Wilson Street, living across a river right uh, near the, the elementary school. And I would walk to school every morning. And we were the second house on the road. And there was a house on the corner. And there was a little old lady there. Her name was Miss Anderson. And she was probably, I mean, she had to be in her 70s when you know, we moved there. So she was you know, an older grandmotherly type. But we ended up becoming really good friends. Like I remember like when I would go to school or come home from school, she would be out, you know, next to the road with a snack, you know, an oatmeal cake or a banana or something. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you know, and then I would start doing chores for her and she would, you know, pay me a little bit to be able to go to the five and dime. And, and then I remember, you know, going into her house and she would, you know, cook me cabbage and, you know, and just, and, and, and sometimes read me Bible stories and yeah, right. I mean, just, yeah, you know, just cool. our, our neighbor that, you know, is this sweet little old lady. And, and so we just bonded, you know, had a special bond and really wow. probably until I was about 15 and she was, she went home to be with the Lord. We just had this special bond. Even when we moved away, you know, I would go back and visit her and, you know, occasionally. So, yeah, so she's cool. another one. And, you know, just throughout life, it seems like God has placed those the angels again in my life to yeah. you know, help me along. What an That's important cool. lesson though, for all of us to, mm. you know, to, to recognize those whom God has placed in our lives and then to be yeah. that person that he wants to place in the lives of others to influence them. Mm-hmm. So I want to go back to college because here you are a boy from the holler who's a football <laughs> star at college uh, <laughs> and you get a master's in civil engineering. Is that right? And yes. so then you actually practice that for a while. And then there's this, Crazy transition <laughs> from yes. from that over to missions. So tell us about that. What happened? Sure. So of course, you know, Todd, like a lot of you know young men and women when they go to college, especially if they're at the D one level, they're like, hey, you know, you know, I, I want to go to the next level, right? So I mean, I, I had you know been eating and drinking and 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 breathing and you know football and working out. Obviously, I mean, for you know through my middle school and high school career. And so when I went to UVA, I mean, I really had a goal. Hey, I want to make it to the next level. And I mean, really what pushed me to that dream was my mom. I wanted to build her house, you know, build her house on the side of a hill. Yeah. You know, if there's money left over, you know, buy myself a red Corvette. You know, that was the car <laughs> back in the day, life. right? That's awesome. That's <laughs> but uh, yeah, but God had different plans, you know. And so, yeah. you know, you realize, you know, when you get to that level, everybody's big, fast and strong, you know, you're, you know, so it was competitive through those years. And, and like I said, I mean, you know, the best thing that happened to me was meeting Andre and marrying her. But, uh, you know, I ended my football career on a good note, uh, was able to travel and, you know, uh, probably the, you know, my senior year being in Georgia, and, you know, between the hedges was a lot of fun being on the field, you know, at the start of the game and, you know, just those kind of experiences. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but, but again, I knew, you know, at some point I was going to hang up the cleats. And, and so after college, you know, that's what happened. And I, I really, I had a hard time with that. My third year at UVA, you know, I was, I wasn't getting as much playing time as I hoped, you know, it wasn't going, you know, the way I hoped. And I was really thinking about, man, should I transfer, you know, cause I'd had some other offers and, and so just praying about it and, and really, um, you know, thinking about it, I, I was involved in a local church. I, I met Andrea, we were, you know, dating and she was my girlfriend and just, you know, UVA obviously, you know, was giving me a good education. It was like, you know, I'm for all of these reasons, I'm going to stay here. And, 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 and I just sense the Lord was saying, yes, you know, this is your home finish up. And so I did, and it really went re- very well. Again, like I said, graduated from there and actually, so what happened though, so my undergrad degree was environmental science. So, you know, it was more, you know, geology, ecology, hydrology, atmosphere, and weather. And, um, and so I didn't do the master's until a few years later, but just one funny story about that. So my first semester, I took an NYR English 101, right? I mean, every all the freshmen got to take the English 101. Well, you you write the way you speak, right? So when you, you know, you know, change the tar and, you know, you ain't, you know, ain't done nothing or whatever, you know, it's just like that kind of language doesn't translate well. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that Jeff Fox you know, so worthy like, kind of language. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's good. <laughs> I just, so Wendy, I got, I got 
red marks for you know all my English work and and became if fortunately like as first years we had to have um you know study hall three nights a week two hours a night and so I was with an English tutor pretty much every night and mm. so he helped me to you know pass that but that definitely geared me toward the steered me toward the sciences you know and the math so but so- uh, once, so once on, Andre and I, when we married, we went down to the DR. God had been good to us. We wanted to give him a year of our lives. Came back to Charlottesville. We could have lived. She's from New York City. We could have lived in the city. We could have lived in anywhere in Virginia. You know, she's Hungarian American. We could have gone to Hungary. You know, all these different options. But we really, since the Lord was just leading us to raise our family uh, in the Charlottesville area. And so she was pregnant with Alex when we got back. So we just, yeah, started life here. And I did. I began to work as an engineer. And uh, yeah, it was during that time that we were really looking to get into ministry because we were, you know, heavily involved in our local church. We were elders in the church. We were we had spent a year in the Dominican Republic. The only way we knew to be a missionary was to go somewhere. Um, so we had done that. And, and real so quick, we really just to throw this in, you know, God does not waste anything. So even as you were growing up with as kind of a minimalist, <laughs> if you will, yeah, <laughs> uh, being a missionary, it was no big deal, right? Like ah. Absolutely, Wendy, 100%. Absolutely. God just every those six years, you know, what's funny is like when I moved to UVA, my parents moved into town and like had a normal (laughs) life. I'm like, guys, why'd you wait until I moved yeah. away? Now, I will just going back real quickly. So it was funny though, moving out of that shack in June, going up to UVA for you know summer school. We happened to be very good that year. We went to the Peach Bowl. So in December, I'm in Atlanta, staying in five star hotels. You know, being escorted around the city in charter buses by the police. You know, going to all the hot spots. Wow. You know, getting all these gifts. So it was you know culture shock going from the holler you know to Atlanta. So, you know, that first year, but, sure. you know, I, I was not complaining and I was like, you know, 24 seven, you know, uh, electricity and water and food. And so it was great. Life was really good. Well, that yes. had to, that had to score a little higher on the joy meter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what, that, that, that kind of, you know, that raises the joy meter. <laughs> up. Right. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, if you have the choice, you know, you like those kind of things, right? But uh, <laughs> so anyway, getting back to the story. Yeah. yeah. So I was really, um, so we were, yeah, we were still in Charlottesville area, we're having raising a family, had a couple of kids. And, uh, and so nothing was opening up for us to be in ministry. So I decided to go back to UVA. I said, this is what's in my hands. You know, I'll be a fleece to the Lord. If I get in, you know, to the master's program, that'll be a fleece that, you know, the Lord will open that door. And he did. So I finished uh, in two years with my master's degree in civil engineering with the emphasis in environmental engineering. And so began to, you know, continue that work again, involved in the local church. And literally about a year later, when I finished the master's program, I had a dream that I was laid off from my job. And literally two days later, my dream came true. So I'm, you know, we're a local engineering firm. This is a mid nineties. We're bought out by somebody in Boston and they're going to phase out my department. So I'm going to be laid off. Well, so was this, I, a, was this a, like dream? a question? <laughs> what, what, was this a yeah. dream dream? Like you're sleeping at night like and a, you dream an that? actual dream, no a literal kidding. dream. Wow. Yeah. God so prepared like, wow, you man, ahead That was time. a weird dream, you know? Yeah. And I go in two days later and like, man, it happened. What was your first? <laughs> it's what? rare. That's one of the rare yeah, yeah. dreams I've had that came true. What was you and your wife's first reaction to the news that you didn't have a job anymore? Yeah. You know, I think like a lot of, you know, young couples, I mean, she wasn't working. She was a stay at home mom. We had, I think three children. No, yeah. Four children at the time, you know, mortgage. I mean, it was, yeah, it was shocking. And, uh, and again, that was the path, you know, I felt like, again, the Lord had not opened up any doors for us to be in ministry. So it's like, okay, Lord, you know, we're, I'm going to be a professional engineer. My first ministry is to my family to care for my family. So that'll take care of my family. And then we'll be generous, you know, to the Lord's work. But yeah, so this happened. And so obviously I said, okay, Lord, you have my attention. Okay. What do you, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> right. I mean, and, and again, the joy, right. Maybe it's a little bit of damper on the joy meter there, but, <laughs> but you know, God's, but got, still you, God's got you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's right. Wendy. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. so I began to pray and that's when we were going to church and uh, with a brother, his name is Bo Barreto, co-founder of advancing native missions. And I knew he was an awesome man of God. He had a beautiful wife, four kids, Filipino, um, he would travel around. I knew he would travel around the world. I didn't know really what he did, but he was in my Sunday school class, you know, we'd pray for him and send him out. And so, yeah. So when he found out I was in transition, he actually had a conversation with Andre and said, Hey, you know, tell Oliver, you know, if he's uh, in transition, if he wants to come to A&M for six months, 
you know, as a vacation, uh, you know, just, just tell them to come on by. So, <laughs> so that was the initial conversation. Yeah, he said yeah. that he thought that there was about a 1% chance that I would come by, but oh, wow. I was, you know, I was praying and seeking the Lord. And that was a conversation from a man that I, you know, respected. And so and the I timing went by. was right. I mean, God gave you a dream yeah. that he was going to end this season and yeah. launch you into something else that you had actually yeah. been seeking anyway. So he's yeah. got, he's got you, you know, it's all under his, yeah, that's, he's got under control, but um, <laughs> dreams right. are so important, right? Like not just yes. those kind of dreams. Yes. Uh, that Actual you had, literal dreams. But, yes. Little dream, literal dreams, but also dream dreams to dream bigger and better. They're important. Yeah. Why is that? And how important yeah. are they? So, yeah. So, Wendy, so what I've found in my life, is, and, and then this is something I've realized as I've gotten older, is that, you know, it really was a dream of, you know, playing pro football that got me out of the holler. You know, I mean, I, you know, worked out five times a week. You know, I didn't drink soda for my teenage career. I mean, I was just so focused you know, on getting out and it did get me to, you know, got me to UVA to university. And then, you know, but then that dream died, you know, and that was hard, you know, because like, you know, I've been doing this now for 10 years and it's like, man, you know, August comes around and I'm not in two a days. So, so I feel like it's really important for us, you know, as Christians to realize, you know, it's okay to have a dream and that dream takes you to a certain point, And then that dream may die that God may have another dream for you. I think you know, that is something right now yeah. that someone needs to hear mm -hmm. right now, because I think um, all too often we can have that dream and we just camp on it. And then Absolutely. if it doesn't come to fruition, uh, people go into a deep, dark depression or, you know, whatever. So let's keep talking a little bit more about that. And, and Absolutely. Well, you, I, mean, that I want to add something. Right? I, oh, yes. I got to add something okay, to okay. that because, yeah. because when you had that dream to play football, uh, you didn't just sit on the couch, uh, have shakes mm -hmm. saying, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to sit here. And then when it's time to play, I'll play. I mean, you yes. worked hard Discipline. to help God fulfill that dream for you. Yes. And I think sometimes, don't you think that's maybe one of the missing links is that we have these dreams. We don't do anything about it. We just sort of sit back and well, God, make it happen. <laughs> God is saying, well, let's get going. Right. <laughs> Todd, a dream without a plan is just a fantasy. Ah, you know, well said. And I've, I've learned, I mean, obviously now I know how to put it into words, but you know, thoughts lead to actions, lead to habits, daily habits lead to, you know, winning the day, winning the week, winning the month, winning the year, winning the life. Right. And so, you know, when I, so I learned early on that when I played my first game at the end of August or beginning of September, really, I won or lost that day on January one on whether I was in the weight room or not. You know, where was I, you know, in January, February, March leading up to September. So if I was working hard and doing everything I could do to prepare myself, then it was going to be good, you know, mm. and, and it was, you know, and I was going to, we were going to win. That's and right. so the Lord really, yeah, he taught me that lesson early on. That's a great point though, you know, that I have pointed out to my children and, and really, especially young people, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. is that, you know, God gives you dreams and you have dreams. But you got to, you know, you got to work hard. You got to put a plan in place. That's our part, right? God's sovereignty, but our responsibility. So that's a, that's mm -hmm. a great point. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, will you say that there are two essential questions that you need to ask when seeking the Lord for direction with uh, these dreams or his dreams or otherwise? <laughs> but what are those two questions? Well, you could buy the book and find out, but I he's going to tell us right now too. <laughs> but you want to buy the book anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think, yeah. So I'll have to like, you know, refresh my memories, <laughs> but I mean, so, you know, so, you know, one question obviously that, you know, that I had again, when it, when I had this first dream, it ended. And then even the, again, the, the dream to be an engineer. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I had that, the literal dream, then that dream also ended because I ended up, you know, going to A&M, seeking the Lord, the Lord opened up the door for me to be there. So now, you know, I'm at a global missions organization. It's very young and just small, but, you know, so that again, the dream of football, the dream of engineering was gone. And, you know, really um, when I get into those places, Wendy, I ask the Lord, okay, first of all, I recognize, you know, there's been a change and, you know, Lord, what are you doing? You know, what are you, you know, you're, you're obviously, you're speaking to me, you know, I'm listening, you have my attention, you know, what do you want me to do? And I think, I mean, really, that's, that's the main question. And probably, you know, a couple of questions within that, you know, as just, 
first of all, recognizing that the Lord is doing something, uh, saying, Lord, is this, you you know, is this, you're doing this for a change in me. Now, you know, what is that? You know, show me the way. So, yeah, so those were, and, and, you know, and I really, especially with the engineering job, I mean, what I, uh, the way that I learned that, you know, to really to pay attention and ask the Lord, the question was that David, when he would go out to fight the Philistines, you know, he would, says he would inquire of the Lord and say, Lord, do I go out and, and face the Philistines? You know, do I fight them? And then the Lord would even give him strategies, you know, for how to do that. And so that was really, so that was a time when I was seeking this, you know, new transition, you know, as um, into global ministry was Lord, you know, I've had the dream is, are you, is this the direction that you're giving me? And honestly, I'll um, just real quickly tell you that uh, one night I was, went to the altar, I was praying through this I'm, I'm interviewing for other engineering jobs, you know, because I, I don't know, you know, okay, that's, you know, the en- engineering path is still there. Uh, the, you know, the global ministry path is there, but I went to the altar to pray and a brother came up and laid his hand on me and prayed for me. And he began to really answer the questions of my heart. And I would call it a word of knowledge. He said, this is a path God's chosen for you. Go down this path. God will provide for you and your children. And that was the mm. question in my heart. It's like, Lord, I have four growing children, you know, and they like to eat, you know, <laughs> and they're all athletes and like, they're going to be, you know, grow up to, you know, want to, mm. want to eat a lot of food and they want, you know, and all these things. It's like, I need to know you're going to feed them. <laughs> yeah, right. Basically. That's right. 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 And, and, and he, and right there, I knew then, so that was Sunday night, Monday morning, I went in and resigned from my engineering job. Mm. And it was from inquiring of the Lord, Lord, is this a time? Is this what you want me to do? Is this your dream for my life? And, you know, he, he gave me a clear word. You don't just have invincible joy. You have great faith. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll say. Listen, Oliver, I, yeah, I was going to say, um, it's one thing to have those dreams. It's a whole nother thing to trust God, right. To fulfill yes. those dreams. And then with like in your case where the, the dream changed, right. Yeah. I mean, you, you weren't going to play football anymore, right. nor were you going to do engineering anymore. Um, it just occurs to me that you, you have, learn to trust God, no matter what you seek his direction with the, with the expectation he's actually going to lead you no matter where, and you're willing to trust him. And I I think that again, that's so important for all of us in our, in our daily walk with the Lord, when he says, okay, I want you to turn left over here. (laughs) And and, what's our first impulse? Why? I'm not sure where that goes. Yeah. Or that's not what I had (laughs) in store. That's not what I wanted to do. Right. But but I was thinking when, when you come (laughs) to that place of trust, it, it could yeah. release joy because you're trusting in the one who has the plan and will give the direction. Correct. Exactly. My next book is going to be invincible faith. Mm. Oh, <laughs> that, that works. Yeah, I think that so. works. You're planting seeds on that, right? Yeah. yeah. There you go. I mean, Todd, you, you hit it, uh, you know, the nail on the head. I mean, it really, it all, first of all, I mean, invincible Jesus is, I mean, Augustine called him the sovereign joy, right? Mm. And this is just another, term, right? Invincible joy. I mean, he really is that invincible joy. And that's where that invincible joy comes from is Jesus being in you, you know, the light of glory, right? The, mm. the image of the father, the, the radiance of the father, the, you know, all, you know, Hebrews one, Colossians one, Ephesians one, right? That's Jesus. And he's in you. And, you know, and even like his last words to the disciples, you know, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. All authority in heaven. He is the being right now in charge of everything, Mm. you know, whether people realize it or not. And then at the end of that, right. And of course he tells us, go and make disciples. Then at the end, and he says, I will be with you always to the end of the earth. So, so, you know, God, you're right. Just from a boy, God has put the faith in me. I I, I recognize that, you know, but I feel like that, you know, it's for anybody though. I mean, if, you know, if we turn to God truly and believe in him and trust him and, you know, and with our whole heart that he'll, he'll do what he did for me, for anybody. I really, you know, Mm. it's not, he's not partial, you know, he's impartial. He's, yeah. You you even say in your book that that, that God doesn't have favorites. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. He says that too, right? But we know. <laughs> but sometimes we all kind of want to think we're his favorites. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Well, I, I think know. we are all his favorites. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. There you go. All right. Yeah. Well, here's the question. What what are okay. some a few ways that um that we can share joy with others, you know, no matter what the circumstances? How can we yeah. go about sharing joy? Yeah. 
Wow. Um, so, Wendy, I would say, you know, really for me, it starts, you know, in the morning, um, you know, reading so the word of God. I mean, it really, it all comes from the word of God, you know, so I have to fill myself up in the morning, you know, with the word of God, affirmations, declarations, you know, of Mm. God's word, Mm. Uh, you know, I'm not going to listen to my own feelings because if it's gray and rainy outside, you know what, you know, I'm going to be telling myself it's gray and rainy outside, but I'm going to say, you know what, no, God said, this is a day God has made. I will rejoice and be glad. And my mom's kind of like that. She's like, you know, it can be a tornado or a hurricane. She's like, man, this is a beautiful day. I right? love this Carol so, <laughs> lady. Yes. <laughs> but, but it, you know, but I really feel like it starts with us filling ourselves up, you know, with, with the mm. Lord, with the Holy Spirit, you know, through reading the word of God, spending time in prayer and fellowship, worshiping Jesus. And then we can go out the door, right? And just share joy every time we have an opportunity. I mean, it can be so simple, right? Like a smile, like you guys, you have beautiful smiles. I mean, you know, just coming into, you know, coming in the door and somebody's having a bad day, sharing a good word. I mean, obviously the tongue has life and the power of life and death in it, you know, so, so just being, you know, positive, uh, you know, just paying attention, listening, being a good listener and, you know, and offering again, hope, joy, you know, I mean, that for me, that's kind of just, you know, how it works. It's just like, mm-hmm. he fills me up. I go out and, you know, and I just try to pour myself out. And of course you can, you know, there are certainly a lot of other ways. I mean, you know, be thoughtful, you know, uh, you know, give gifts. I mean, there are so many ways to, you know, be so, there. It can be so simple. You mm-hmm. know? So simple. That's, yeah. that's how I feel like. Yeah. Wendy, that, you know, just every, almost every interaction you have with another human being, you know, you can give them something. Mm, yeah. Good. 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 Yeah. Oliver, your uh, your book really is an invitation for us to uh, to have this invincible joy as we chase yes. these god sized dreams. Very right? well written. And, Thank uh, you. Yeah. So you you have been doing that very thing, and you have learned what it really means to have invincible joy. Uh, just talk a little bit about uh, for advancing Native missions. What what do you see yeah. as the sort of the the future plans as God is using you and and that ministry? Yeah. So so Todd. So what it what um, really intrigued me about A&M and really um, was the reason that I came here was number one was the vision, Matthew 24, 14, when the gospel, the kingdom has been proclaimed throughout the world, geographic world, as a witness to all nations, ethnos, people groups, then the end will come. So, wow, what a what a big vision, right? Uh, you know, when all the earth has heard the good news of Jesus, then the end comes and that's Jesus comes back, you know, and declares himself king. So it's like that, that really attracted me. And then second, though, was really the mission and that was something that was new to me. It's a different paradigm. So again, like I said, when my wife and I went to be a missionary, we thought you had to go somewhere. But at, actually at AM, what we do is we encourage, we equip, and we advocate strategic, fruitful Native missionaries that are reaching the least reached and unreached in their countries. And so that's, you know, so that's our paradigm. So we don't send you know, Americans over, anybody over from the West, but we go into these countries and we look for, again, the Christians, they, they love the Lord, they love each other, you know, they're already working hard, they're, you know, they're smart, they're dedicated, many of them know many languages, they know the culture, the people, you know, all those kind of things. And most of the time, they just need some encouragement and some love and some resources, and they'll multiply 10 times. Mm-hmm. So by God's grace and for His glory, we're partnering with about 290 indigenous ministries in over 100 countries of the world. Yeah, wow. representing over 13,000 native missionaries, and they're reaching awesome. out to almost a thousand uh, unreached people groups. And that really is the tip of the spear for us. Yeah. Is yeah. We want to, we want to, we want the the gospel to go where it's never gone. You know, yeah. when we talk about unreached, like we are talking about, like these people, they've never heard the name of Jesus. Like they've never celebrated Christmas. They have no idea what Easter is, you know? So yes. those are the places, you know, and that's my, mainly the 1040 window, kind of South Asia, Southeast Asia, you know, Middle East. That's where most of the, the hardest ground is. And of course, that's the birthplace of all the, you know, non-Christian religions. Most of the poverty, spiritual and physical poverty in the world are in that window. So those are places we especially want to go and take the good news. And, and Todd, what I think about is like when I heard that good Good news myself, and, you know, and as a boy, new man, yes, I want to worship Jesus. And he became my Lord, my Savior, my God, my best friend, you know, and yet you have people out there, they've never heard his name, his beautiful right. name, you know, for the first time, they had never had mm. an opportunity to bow down and worship. And that really is our passion here, you know, is, mm. is, is getting the word out. And, and Todd, honestly, I believe in our day with collaboration between Christian ministries, like I've never seen before, we do a ton of work with like the 
Jesus Film Project and, you know, other ministries. I mean, probably 10 or 15 ministries we're collaborating with, uh, with indigenous missionaries now that are in these countries, you know, the Hudson Taylors of the world and, you know, the, 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 um, all the other William Carey's and those missionaries, modern missionaries from, you know, England and other European countries that went out. Now those seeds have come up. And so now you have, you know, these seeds planted around the world. You have technology binding us together. And we really feel like that, you know, in our lifetime, you know, we could complete the Great Commission. And that really is the biggest dream. I mean, that's talk about that's a god size dream. dream. That's That's the dream we chase here. Yeah, that's a god size. What what I love about Oliver is that he's he's got big god size (laughs) dreams that that you're chasing. You're chasing God's dream for your life (laughs) and for everyone's life. Mm. Yes. Um, But you're you you go after it, and and we all need to step up and go after it because this is the big dream that we all should have in our hearts. And every um, Christian, every Christian, and Todd actually had the opportunity to have the experience of reaching some, I, I know what you're talking about. So he knows and yeah. it's, oh, it's powerful. A chance to yeah. backpack in the, in the mountains of the Himalayas yeah. uh, oh, wow. just a couple years ago. And we, and we did, we, we reached a yeah. people group that had never heard the name of Jesus yeah. and they were wow. blown away when we could tell them the story and give them the gospel and God had already stirred their hearts up. They were wide open. It's like, where have you been? <laughs> it's like, what took yeah. you so long? Right. <laughs> I, I think we underestimate how God is wanting to get us going, whether it's, yeah. you know, like, like, like Oliver said, you don't have to get on a plane, travel somewhere. You can actually do it in your hometown. Right yeah. where you are, there are people hungry for the Lord, and they need to yeah. hear about Him from you. Yeah, Amen. Chase that God's so, eyes. Thank you, thank That's you great. for being so bold in all that you do, yeah. and and uh, just you're you're just like a pit bull, you know. You don't <laughs> let go. I love that. We, my daughter owns one, and we we own a half pit bull, so that's a good illustration. Uh, we, hey, we love pit bulls. Hey, <laughs> I, I, I had one growing up. They're they're actually really sweet if they're trained. They really well. are. It just yes. depends on how you train them, and exactly. yeah, that's right. And I always yeah. have to make that statement to people. But anyway, <laughs> Oliver, you are a delight. Thank you. Yeah. For Thank sharing you, your invincible joy with us. And uh, people can go to oliverasher.com to get the book. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yep. Could I give, yeah, yep. oliverasher.com? Could I give yes. also the website for our ministry here? Yeah, please, yeah, please. Which, please do. Which they could obviously get more information at advancingnativemissions.com. So just our name. Dot com. And we'll yeah. have that in the show notes as well. So. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so very much. God yes. bless you and keep doing the great work that you're doing. Thank you, Wendy. Thank All you, right. Todd. It's been a pleasure to be with y'all. Likewise. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Blessings. Invincible joy. I yeah. Mean, th- he's for the right a, reasons. Oh, for exactly. Uh, you know, I mean, I, he's just a smiley face because he <laughs> is just filled with the joy of the Lord because yeah. he's doing God's hmm. purpose on his life. Like it's like it's well, there's like any reason why every single one of us uh, can't I, chase after. That's a God-sized saying. dream, whatever that is in your life, whatever God is revealing to you about what he wants you to go after. Yeah. And if the reason you haven't gone after it is because you don't know how it's going to happen, that's where the trust factor comes in, right? That's where the faith is employed. Yeah. You take action. And if that dream only takes you to that certain spot, then God's got the bigger dream and you just keep taking more action, taking more action and hearing from his hearing from him and spending time in God's and, word and hello. spending time with That's the Lord Jesus him. brings about that invincible joy and yes. that invincible faith. So, so thank you so much for me. tuning in to this episode of your biggest breakthrough. Uh, we will catch you on the next episode. Be blessed. Head on over to your biggest breakthrough.com where you'll find some free resources and information and a place where you can comment. And we would love to dialogue with you there. So thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time.